Hello everyone, I'm going to do a quick review on this Line Car Double Din Multimedia Stereo I got on Amazon. Paid about $135 for it. It's definitely on the low end of Android based stereos, so keep that in mind as I'm talking about the things it does and does not do. First thing you'll notice is that the trim ring from my Metro installation kit is not installed. This unit's actually oversized for a double din. It's probably about anywhere from, I don't know, 3 16ths to a quarter inch too big the way it comes out of the box. I actually had to take some screws out of the chassis to get it to fit through the opening. I was able to get the screws back in on the other side once I got it through there, but it's definitely too big to install the trim ring around it. Not the end of the world, it still looks okay. You can get some kind of molding to fill in this gap, a little round rubber strip or something if it bugs you. I don't know if I will or not. It's not that big a deal. Car's already running. It will power up on accessory just fine. It's just I have the air conditioning running because it's hot outside. So we'll go ahead and start it up. You'll see that it has a factory logo. It has several different manufacturers you can choose from for your splash screen. Came up to Bluetooth pretty quick. Go ahead and listen to whatever's playing right now. The audio quality on Bluetooth is pretty good. On Aux, it's okay. It's still a little muted, but most Auxes are. They're not as powered as Bluetooth. We'll get around to the FM issues here in a few minutes, but this sounds okay. You can skip and rewind just fine. Notice there's no artist information being displayed. That's a knock against the stereo. It's uh, actually kind of bad for it. Go ahead and pause this. Go back to our main menu. You've got your interface here. The clock is set. Uh, I have had a hard time keeping the accurate time on this unit. It keeps wanting to drop off by an hour or so every time you restart it. I'm not sure what time it is now, but it's definitely not 2.41. You've got GPS, radio, Bluetooth, USB, your SD card. On the next page you have your setup, which is also down here. Calendar, disc, aux, and camera. Uh, aux works fine. The camera we'll get to in a minute. We'll go into setup. You got your logo setting, that's where the manufacturer splash screen can be selected. Read your instructions because there's a pin number you have to have to get into that. The rest of these settings are pretty straightforward. You can adjust the color for the LCDs and all that. Let's go now to the main feature, which is the radio. This is the biggest knock on the stereo. It has a lot of static. For an FM receiver, it doesn't pick up stations very well at all. About half the stations I've tried to tune to have had static on them or don't come through at all. At a minimum, they won't have stereo, just mono coming through. The volume profile, that's that one there. Definitely you can hear the static on that one. It's just no new stereo should ever have static on it. So this is definitely just a, a crappy manufacturing job on it. The DVD I have not used yet. These buttons on the side work, but you have to hold them down. You can't just tap them. You'll have to actually hold them for a second for to get back to the menu items. You got mode, Bluetooth, your dimmer. The dimmer is another kind of drawback. Um, the actual brightness profile is very narrow, so you can't just scroll down at night to get it to be dim enough that it doesn't bug you. You almost have to just turn it off for that. Um, reflection from the LCD not to bug you when you're driving. So that's something we'll have to get used to. The sound on it is average at best as far as the audio quality and loudness, but for $130 stereo it's okay. And I also have factory speakers which aren't the best in the world as well. So bottom line is all these features work, the FM is terrible on it. So if you listen to a lot of radio, if you don't Bluetooth your phone or aux in, you're going to be disappointed in the stereo. Uh, again, I haven't used the DVD feature yet, but I assume it works just fine. Everything else does. This phone book takes a while to load up, but it will load. You've got, uh, I probably shouldn't have videotaped that. I'm probably going to delete that part because now you got everybody's video or phone numbers listed in front of you. So we'll ignore that for now. I'm going to edit that part out go back to the Bluetooth, fast forward, it's okay, rewind. Now, cool feature, it did come with a backup camera. Right now the car is running, I'm going to move it into reverse. And there's your backup camera right there. The camera quality is good, the installation was straightforward. The easy, I mean the best part about this receiver pretty much has been the installation of the backup camera. It was hassle free, just followed the wiring. You're not going to find instructions for it in the manual, don't even bother. 
go online, watch a couple of YouTube videos on how to hook up backup cameras, and you should, specifically to your vehicle, you should have no issues getting this installed. Now, it does have scales for distance, green, yellow, and red, but it does not have a proximity warning. So don't back up expecting this thing to start beeping at you. You're gonna run into whatever it is behind you. Just use the color gauges, don't get too close, stop before the red, you should be just fine. Move it back into park, goes right back to the audio or whatever feature you have. Now, this does come with navigation. It does not have a direct navigation button on the front of it. I don't understand why that is, it's silly. So to get to navigation, you gotta go to GPS, show map, destination route. The GPS receiver is accurate. It gives you your position very quickly, but the map software that came preloaded with it is terrible. It's practically useless. You've got your map SD card up here. You, supposedly, you are able to upgrade the, this thing. I'm gonna try it here a little bit later. I don't know if I have to USB from my laptop into the head unit or I maybe get an adapter and put this directly into an SD, this is an XD card, but an SD card slot, because most laptops don't have anything small enough for these XDs, and try to download the map software. I'm not even sure right now who makes the map software for this. I've tried looking it up and I've found two or three different links to it. I'll probably do a whole nother video on the uh, map upgrade later on. We gotta pop that back in. Once that's out, the GPS loses all of its information, so You'll have to reload the app. It takes a few minutes. It's, it's not the worst thing in the world, but every day you're not gonna be undoing that map card. So just go through this whenever you have to do an update, it's all right. And we're back to where we were. The cons of this radio are pretty much limited to, it's only 50 by four watts, 200 watts total. It's not gonna blow you away. Do not get this on a high-end audio system in your car. I wouldn't even get it if you're planning on adding one. I would definitely get a stronger head unit, even if you're gonna run an amplifier and upgrade speakers. This is a very basic radio. It's not for audiophiles, it's not for competition. It's just not gonna be able to do it. For $135, this thing was not disappointing although it is frustrating simply because of the FM reception issue in it. Again, if you have FM and that's all you really use because you don't have a Bluetooth phone or you don't subscribe to an audio service like Pandora or Google Play Music, I would not get this radio. It's just got to be a, a headache for you. So that pretty much wraps that up. A um, couple notes, I used Spectra wiring harness. I used a Metra installation kit. All of those were, worked just fine. I had to buy no additional wiring. I had to steal a little piece of wire from here or there to extend the harness for the backup camera. So, cause it's a pre-made length and it's not made for every single car. When I was routing it through the trunk to get to my backup light wiring harness to tie it in, it was just a little bit short. So I had to make a little wire jumper. So when you're doing this, have electrical tape, have a pair of scissors, wire strippers, a small screwdriver or trim removal tool to pop this stuff off have butt connectors, have crimp connectors, and you should be ready to go. I think in total, with the backup camera, I spent maybe an hour and a half on this installation and didn't have many, if any, hiccups along the way. $135, Amazon.com, Car. It's, time will tell if this is gonna be a robust enough unit, but uh, I may do another video if it fails, but until then, I'm just gonna use it. It's doing everything I wanted it to do and I will try the map update. Once I figure that up, I'll probably post another video on that. Thanks.